Good evening sa mga highly favored, mga pinili o mga pinalangga ang anak sa Gino. The Lord has a word for you tonight. So welcome kayo sa itong New Covenant in Christ Saturday evening service. And before tama ito sa itong message, let's say the church declaration all together now. Today, I receive all that Christ died to give me. His abundant life, limitless grace, boundless mercies, divine restoration of youth, and overflowing provisions. Today, I take hold of all God's blessings, healings, and miracles. I shall be transformed from glory to ever-increasing glory and victory to overwhelming victory. I will enter the promised land of the believer's rest, seeing His mighty restoration in each and every area of my life. I proclaim that I am God's beloved, His highly favored child, His powerful servant, and His overcoming champion. And because I am blessed to overflowing, I will be a blessing to all. In Jesus' name, Amen. Nagatuo ba mo, Church? Anong gideclare ka ron? Nagdeclare ta ganiha nga na ay overflowing blessings sa itong kinabuhi. That we are blessed to overflowing. Asa man agikan? That comes from Psalm 23 that says, My cup runs over. Diba? Kung sa New Living Translation na kapatang dia, My cup overflows with blessings. So, kung nagatuo mo na, yung gideclare na, ninyo, along with me, in faith, Definitely, but ipa, God will definitely fulfill it in all of our lives. So ready for the word? Ang atong message for tonight is dedicated to worshiping together. Now, karon sa mensahe nato ito, karong gabi na, gilid ko sa ginoo para magbasa sa kinabuhi ni King Hezekiah. Magsugot sa 2 Chronicles chapter 28 sa New Living Translation. Ang amahan ni King Hezekiah kay si King Ahaz. And kung nakailan mo kay King Ahaz, Si King Ahaz kay a very bad ruler sa Judah. Tungo na mga ng Israel, o ng Judah, nag-split mga na sila. Kaya dili nila dawaton ang leadership sa ni King Rehoboam nga usa sa mga mga descendants ni King David. So because of that, nagkaroon ng Northern Kingdom of Israel and naapoy Southern Kingdom, which is the Judah. Na dito ang tribe of, ang na dito ang nagdala sa tribe of Judah or ang Kingdom of Judah is the tribe of Judah and the tribe of Benjamin. So, uh, basahan nato from 2 Chronicles 28, Ahaz rules in Judah. As usual, kay kulang man atong time, and then taas yun yung story ni King Hezekiah. Ako nalang i-compress, ako nalang i-summarize para sa tanan nato mga viewers, and also mag-skip po tag mga verses and some portions din na nato kay nang basahon. Okay? So, verse 1, nakabutang diha, when Ahaz rules in Judah, Si King Ahaz did not do what was pleasing in the sight of the Lord his ancestor, as his ancestor, ancestor David had done. Instead, he followed the example of the kings of Israel. He cast metal images for the worship of Baal. He offered sacrifices in the valley of Ben-Hinnom, even sacrificing his own sons in the fire. So verse 20, when King tiglath Pileser of Assyria arrived, he attacked Ahaz instead of helping him. Verse 24, he, si King Ahaz, he shut the doors of the Lord's temple. Pay, pay attention to this. He shut the doors of the Lord's temple so that no one could worship there. And he set up others to pay good gods in every corner of Jerusalem. Now, ang papa ni King Hezekiah, si King Ahaz, was a very bad king. He stopped ang mga Levites from uh, serving in the temple. Nawala ilang mga ministers. He closed, according to verse 24, 30, he shut down the temple. So that wala na yung maka-worship sa ginoo. And that was a very, one of the most horrible things that King Ahaz did. And then, dilip lang kana he was an idol worshiper. He followed pagan gods. And even, nakabotang din sa verse 2, um, even dito sa valley of Ben-Hinom, pati mga sarili niya, mga anak, mga lalaki, iyang gisacrifice sa mga idols. So we have here a king that is very, very evil. A king that turned away from the Lord. A king that never followed God. And ang effect sa iyang kinabuhi, makita ni mo, all Judah suffered. Ang tibok Judah was defeated. Judah lived a very defeated life, the entire kingdom, because the king did not follow the Lord and he taught the people to do the same. And grabe kaayo ang nitabo. Ang, si, ano, ang, at the time nga he was the king of Judah, Israel and Judah fought. And ang mga Israel, they defeated Judah and took a hundred, uh, more than a hundred thousand ng mga slaves dito padulong sa Israel. May na lang, nga na yung prophet sa ginoo, pag-abot dito sa Israel, sa mga uh, slaves o katong mga plunder nga gikan sa kingdom of Judah, ni istorya tong sa ka-prophet, ingon siya nga, sala ni inyong ginabuhat. 
ato ni silang mga kapwa nga mga hudeyo. So dapat buyan ato ni sila. And dili lang kay buyan ato sila, i-release po nato atong plunder sa ilaha. And because of that, natauhan ang mga people of Israel and nag release nila ang mga prisoners nila nga gikan sa Juda. Gibalik nila to mga plunder kato mga sanina, gipangkuha nila pati kato mga mga other nga mga valuables ang gipangkuha nila dito and nang gisaninaan nila to mga slaves or mga prisoners nga walay sanina tas gisend nila balik sa Juda may na lang nag-intervene ang Ginoo bisan pag evil ang king sa Juda at that time God still is a God of grace and still he still kanang had compassion on his people because God never loses compassion for his people and at that time because king Ahaz was such an evil king the kingdom of Edom was attacking Judah and also took slaves and prisoners from Judah and at that time the kingdom of Phil, the Philistine kingdoms, the Philistines also invaded Judah a lot and took many of its villages and towns. Kung basahon ni mo ng entire chapter, chapter sa 2 Chronicles 28. And, and then, unsa may gibuhat ni King Ahaz na ngayon siyang tabang kay King Tiglath Pileser of Assyria. And not only that, nagkuha siya og mga valuables from the houses sa mga officials niya, gikan sa palasyo niya, palasyo niya o gikan po sa templo. Tapos iyang gipanghatag dito kay King Tiglat as ano kanang kanang tribute sa iya para mutabang siya sila pero instead nga tabangan siya nila what King Tiglat did kay giatak niya ang Juda and then instead of helping Juda he attacked Juda instead in anak ka curse ang reign ni King Ahas because he never followed the Lord may na lang yung anak dili parehas niya Amazing kaya sa 2 Chronicles chapter 30, namatay na si King Ahaz diha, and he was taken over by his son, si King Hezekiah. And ang yung son was one of the best kings in Israel. I want to tell you the story of King Hezekiah because he's one of the best kings of Israel that you or most Christians don't know about. We all know about King Solomon, we all know about King David, but nobody really knows or studies the life of King Hezekiah. And I believe he's a good example for many Christians and Christian leaders today. Katawan lang kayo, kuyo kayo, kay si King Ahaz was such an evil king, but his son was a very good um, king sa Israel, a son who really followed the Lord. So, it doesn't matter the eye kung kinsa imong paamahan o ganak kay ngano. Even si King Hezekiah was a great king who was a good king who followed the Lord. Iyang anak po nga nag-take over si King Manasseh was also considered one of the most evil kings of Judah. So, evil king, ang anak kay very good king, very God-following king, and then ang sunod nga anak was a very evil king na po. So, it means, mga good, nga ang mga, there is no such thing as an automatic nga, ng mga, madala sa anak or sa apo or sa unsa sunod ni mga generation ang calling sa Ginoo mo na makatawa ko sa ubang churches kay nga no man gusto nila ng ilang anak og anak sa ilang anak mo magdala or maging leader sa ilang simbahan pero dili man tungod kay amahan nila is pastor or amahan nila is anointed dili buti pa subot nga ang anak is the, still the same now kung grace church sila advantage kay ang anak because Although the child will make its own decisions, according to the book of Isaiah, na magoy age ang bata ng siya ang magbuhat sa yung sariling decision. Siya na ang magbuhat sa decision niya kung mo-follow ba siya sa Gino or Dili, kung maging devoted ba siya sa Gino or Dili, musunod ba siya sa Biblia or Dili. Everyone is able to make their own decisions because God is not interested in robots. He wants His children, He wants all people to decide to follow Him. Even from the from Adam and Eve, hantod sa pinakalas, people will always have the free will to follow God or not to follow God. Muna, according to the Bible, choose life, choose God. Because naadiha ang abundance, naadiha ang blessing, naadiha ang protection, naadiha ang eternal life, naadiha ang joy forevermore. Tinood ng kalipay, tinood ng kalinaw. And so, it is not an, it is not a guarantee. Muna, makatawakan sometimes because Pastors want to have their children to take over their ministries. Ano ita buana is there are many people in the ministry right now who are not called to be in the ministry, who are not anointed to be in the ministry. But still, anyway, si King Hezekiah was very different from his father, and his own son was very different from him as well. Pero let's read about the life of King Hezekiah because he is a good example for Christians and Christian leaders to follow. 
So sa 2 Chronicles chapter 30, nakabot na sa verse 1, King Hezekiah now sent word to all Israel and Judah, and he wrote letters of invitation to the people of Ephraim and Manasseh. He asked everyone to come to the temple of the Lord at Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover of the Lord, the God of Israel. And then sa verse 21, So the people of Israel who were present in Jerusalem joyously celebrated the festival of unleavened bread for seven days. Each day the Levites and the priests sang to the Lord accompanied by loud instruments. So makita ni mo diring, si King Hezekiah had a heart that wanted God's people to come together and worship God together. Ang iyang thrust sa iyang rule or sa iyang ministry is for him to be able to unite the people. Can remember, Israel of Judah Baya was separated at that time. They did not have the same kings. They did not worship at the same temple, but he wanted them to come together so that they can worship God together. Muna, nagpadala siya mga invitations. Remember, sa so chapter 29, ang Israel attacked Judah and took prisoners from Judah. But in this next chapter, si King Hezekiah sent invitations to Israel so that they could worship God together, so that they can celebrate the Passover of the Lord together. So makita ni mong heart ni Hezekiah. Ang heart ni Hezekiah is for a heart to unite God's people and to worship God together. And what does it mean to celebrate the Passover at this day and time? Unsa man ang Passover, mo ng time that they, the Jews would celebrate their being freed from the captivity in Egypt sa panahon nila Moses. And ginakao nila ang Passover lamb. That Passover lamb is a picture of Jesus. The eating of the Passover lamb is a precursor of our modern day communion. Remember that communion is very, very powerful and it's very, very important to celebrate. In fact, sa Acts chapter 20, verse 7, nakabutang diha, that on the first day of the week, which is the Sunday, when the Christians and the believers often came together to break bread, they came to hear Paul preach to them. So, makita ni mo sa Acts 20, verse 7, mismo, you can read it in your own Bibles. I did not put it in my PowerPoint that the main reason that Christians would gather together to meet together, although they did also to listen to Paul preach, ang main purpose nila sa paggather together has always been the Holy Communion. Muna, tanawa ni Acts 20 verse 7 na kabatindi, at the day the disciples would gather together on the first day of the week for the purpose of breaking bread. Mugi na ang number one na purpose whenever the early church would meet. Muna, there is a new covenant in Christ, dili na mawala ng communion. Because in the early church, they broke bread every day. Every time magtigom sila, they broke bread. They celebrated communion. And they enjoyed the favor of God and all the people. And God added to their number daily those who were being saved. So amazing ka ayo. And that's why we must never forget, many churches have forgotten this. And communion is only celebrated once a month or less. But, or twice even every quarter or something like that, that we will never forget that the early church always celebrated communion. And when Hezekiah wanted to gather the people to celebrate Passover, this is a picture of the new covenant when people would gather together to worship the Lord by celebrating communion. Why do we celebrate communion? Because communion is a picture of the finished work of Jesus on the cross. Because Jesus commanded us to keep doing communion until He comes again. Because we are proclaiming His death, His finished work, His victory on the cross until He comes again. So whenever we come together, the main thrust has always been communion. That's why communion will always be in every service of the New Covenant in Christ Church. Even sa tong prayer meeting, receiving meetings sa Wednesdays. And then nakabotang there is a verse 21 that when the people of Israel were gathered together to celebrate the Lord, the festival of unleavened bread, which is uh, sa, ano, related to the Passover. Then the days the Levites and the priests sang to the Lord accompanied by loud instruments. Ganahan ang ginoo sa loud instruments. Buti pa sa buta na, dili gusto ang ginoo nga. Marag hilom rata, always dignified, singing songs, nga yaya kay dili. Okay man ha. The Lord appreciates that. But the Lord also loves His people to celebrate with loud instruments. And muna nakabotang dari sa verse 21. Even sa parable of the prodigal son, pagkadungog sa 
uh, sun, katong sun bitaw nga wala nang rebelde na ay loud music and dancing dito sa father's house. Mo nang gusto sa Ginoo. In his house there will always be loud music and dancing. People want God to worship the Lord with joy in our hearts and ang joy makita sa atong pagsayaw sa pagsinggit pag sa pag raise sa atong voices magworship sa iya pati sa pagtugtog sa mga musicians nga mga instrumentalist ug kanang kanang maayo nga pagatugtog ug mga kusog nga pagtugtog mo di nang gusto sa Ginoo gikan sa toa and you will see the blessing that follows the people of Israel under the reign of King Hezekiah dere Padayon ta sa 2 Chronicles chapter 30. Sa so verse 22, ingon dere, Hezekiah encouraged all the Levites regarding the skill they displayed as they served the Lord. The celebration continued for seven days. Peace offerings were sacrificed and the people gave thanks to the Lord, the God of their ancestors. Verse 27, Then the priests and the Levites stood and blessed the people. And God heard their prayer from His holy dwelling in heaven. Nindot kaayo ang nahitabo. Under the reign of King Hezekiah, he called the people to gather together to celebrate Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And ang nahitabo is, he encouraged the Levites to play with skill. Gusto niya ang magtugtog ta sa atong pinaka-best. Gusto niya ang mag-practice sa atong mga musicians. Gusto niya ang atong mga worship leaders will give, sing their best unto the Lord. And nakabotan din, the people gave thanks to the Lord. How did they give thanks? To their praise and worship. And through other things, as we will see later. And then, so verse 27, when the, when the priests of God, the Levites, blessed the people, God heard their prayer from this holy dwelling in heaven. And then, Nindut Kai, that means that the prayers of his people were heard. That means they were answered by the Lord. They were, they were all yes and amen unto the Lord. Because the Lord heard them, because they were giving thanks unto God, they were worshiping Him with loud instruments, and they were playing with skill. Mona na kabatang dali sa verse sa Second Chronicles chapter thirty. Tapos nais ka ayon that we know that Hezekiah is a leader under grace. How do we know that Hezekiah is a leader under grace? Because here, sa so 2 Chronicles chapter 30, verse 18 to 20, basaho na ko sa inyo ha, ay nakabutang dali. Most of those who came from Ephraim, Manasseh, Issachar, and Zebulun had not purified themselves. But King Hezekiah prayed for them. And they were allowed to eat the Passover meal anyway, even though this was contrary to the requirements of the law. For Hezekiah said, May the Lord who is good, Pardon those who decide to follow the Lord, the God of their ancestors, even though they are not properly cleansed for the ceremony. Verse 20, And the Lord listened to Hezekiah's prayer and healed the people. Nindot kaya, amazing kaya. Kabalutang nga, Hezekiah is a king under grace. Dili siya legalistic, kaya nga man. First of all, they celebrated Passover one month late. Normally, si Hebrew calendar, Passover is celebrated on the first month, but they did it on the second month. Kung basaho na to ng entire chapter. And, ang amazing ni Ani is there is a requirement under a law na katong mga hodeyo must be cleansed, must undergo purification ng rituals sa mga, ha, sa mga pari o sa mga Levites. Requirement na siya under the law. But Hezekiah knows that God is not a God who is legalistic. In fact, ningon siya, may the Lord who is good pardon those who decide to go through this without being properly cleansed or purified ng maaginginan ng ceremony. That means he knows that God is a God of grace. He knows that God is not a legalistic God na ginarequire good under the law. Kailangan sundun yun mo to the dot, to the letter. Dili, kabalo siya that God just wants to be worshipped. God just wants His people to be gathered together to praise Him, to honor Him, to glorify Him. And then, even though kontra sa balaod ilang gibuhat mura si Jesus sometimes he would break the sabbath he would break the law just so that he can benefit and bless God's people that's what man said uh, that's what king hezekiah did and then he prayed to the lord lord pasensyahin na sila nga wala sila nakasunod sa balaod but you know what lord i pray over them lord i bless gihapon sila lord why because sa kabutang there is a verse sa verse um, 18. Because the Lord is good, may the Lord who is good pardon those who are not properly cleansed. So he knows that God is good. And this is a revelation under the new covenant of the Lord. So makita ni mo, the Lord listened. And go po kayo in verse 20. The Lord listened to Hezekiah's prayer. And he healed the people. 
That means kung kinsa may nang mga nay sakit sa mga tao, nang aayos sila. Kung nay blind, the blind was able to see. Kung nay lame, the lame was able to to walk. Kung nay deaf, the deaf was able to hear. Because God is a God that's good. God is a God of grace. And Hezekiah knew that. And that is one of the secrets why he was such a good king. Second Chronicles chapter 31, verse 2 to 8. I'm reading from the Living Bible. So verse 2, nakabotang there. Now Hezekiah organized the priests and Levites into service corps to offer burnt offerings and peace offerings and to worship and give thanks and praise unto the Lord. Why? Giving thanks and praise unto the Lord is very important. Verse 3, he also made a personal contribution of animals for the daily morning and evening burnt offerings as well as for the weekly Sabbath and monthly new moon festivals and for the other annual feasts as required in the law of God. So he did not only expect the people to give, he also contributed from his own personal property. So verse 4, in addition, he required the people in Jerusalem to bring their tithes to the priests and Levites so that they wouldn't need other employment, but could apply themselves fully to their duties as required in the law of God. Remember, we took this up last Sunday. The Lord has appoint, it's time for the Lord to appoint leaders in the church. Why? So that the pastors and the priests, the pastors or the ministers can concentrate on what we are called to do, which is the prayer and the word of God. And important kayo mong trabaho. And this is not something that we can take lightly. And so that si King Hezekiah also knows this. He also knows that the ministers, the Levites, need to concentrate on serving and worshiping the Lord and to prayer and to their duties as priests and Levites. Muna yung sa mga people, bring your tithes into God's storehouse. But he didn't just tell the people to bring. He also brought himself. As a leader, we also believe that we have to tithe. There are churches here who feels that the pastors are some how exempt from tithing but that is false that is wrong okay i know even the pastors themselves needs that needs to follow the will of the lord and whenever we give unto the lord we are telling the lord whenever we we give unto the lord we are telling the lord lord we know you are our source we know lord god nga ikaw ang mong provider gusto ka namo honor with our tithes and our offerings lord jesus mo na ginadala namo ni sa imuha and then so pag people bring your tithes into the storehouse so that the priests and the Levites can concentrate on their ministries. So, so verse 5 to 6, the people responded immediately and generously with the first of their crops and grain, new wine, olive oil, honey, and everything else, a tithe of all they owned as required by the law to be given to the Lord their God. But they didn't do this out of the law. They did it generously. Because they were happy to give unto the Lord. Everything was laid out in great piles. It was a huge mountain that the people were giving unto God. The people who had moved to Judah from the northern tribes and the people of Judah living in the provinces also brought in the tithes of their cattle and sheep and brought a tithe of the dedicated things to give to the Lord and piled them up in great heaps. Because the blessing, remember, in the previous verses, remember, the priests and the Levites blessed God's people and they were blessed and God heard their prayers God answered their prayers and in the previous verses nakabutang dito sa previous chapters that's verse 30 that Hezekiah prayed over the people and then what did God do God healed the people and when God blesses his people what is the response the response is joy the response is generosity the response is they want to be a part of God's work they want to be a part of God's ministry so they brought all of these tithes and offerings unto the Levites because they wanted to be to take part in that ministry and they wanted to contribute to that ministry it rises it raises generosity in God in his people and even in King Hezekiah but I tells of verse 7 to 8, the first of these tithes arrived in June and the piles continued to grow until October when Hezekiah and his officials came and saw these huge piles, how they blessed the Lord and praised his people. Verse 9, where did all of this come from? Hezekiah asked the priests and the Levites. Verse 10, and Azariah, the high priest from the clan of Zadok, replied, these are tithes. We have been eating from the stores of food for many weeks, but all this is left over for the Lord has blessed His people. The Lord has blessed His people. Kung kabalo lang ang tanan, 
unsaon ta ma-bless. Na agig blessing diha. Mo everything that you do for the Lord, even when you contribute to the ministry, and ever you give unto the Lord, na ay blessing diha. Ana ang status sa ginoo. Why did the people give? Because they were blessed in the earlier verses. They were healed from their sicknesses. God answered their prayers. They were blessed because of everything when they worshiped God together in those feasts, the feast of unleavened bread. And then it resulted in generosity. And then the generosity resulted in more blessing. It is a never-ending cycle of blessing. And God knows that. And it is a secret that God's people should know. Even there is a Proverbs 3 verse 9 to 10. Glorify the Lord with your wealth. Why do we give to the Lord? It is an act of glorifying God. We glorify God in our body. We glorify God in our wealth. We glorify God in our ministry. We glorify God when we praise and honor Him. But we can also glorify Him with our wealth. Honor Him with your first fruits, with every increase that comes to you. Verse 10. Then every dimension of your life will overflow with blessings, with an uncontainable source of inner joy. From an uncontainable source day, of inner joy. So makita ni Mudia, every dimension of your life will overflow with blessings. Tanhan areas sa imong kinabuhi, physical, ang imong spiritual, ang imong emotional, ang imong health, ang imong financial. Every area will overflow with blessings. Kanunay na to na declare that we are blessed to overflowing. We are receiving the overflowing provision of the Lord. And this is one of the secrets of the Word of God that shows how overflowing blessings can reach and come into our lives. So 2 Chronicles verse 32, it's in an ever-ending ne- never cycle of blessing. The Lord blesses us. We respond with generosity by giving it to the Lord. And the Lord blesses us more. Amazing kay hinahanap ito itong katong priest na nag-ingon siya nga sobra-sobra ang pagkaon. Sobra-sobra ang supply. Because God has blessed His people this much. Amazing kayo. So 2 Chronicles verse 32, nakabotang dali. Sometime later, sa so verse 1, sometime later, after this good work of King Hezekiah, King Sennacherib of Assyria invaded Judah and laid siege to the fortified cities, planning to place them under tribute. So, gusto gusto sila i-enslave ni King Sennacherib of Assyria. So, verse 6, ng batang day, he recruited an army. So, si Hezekiah recruited an army and appointed officers and summoned them to the plains before the city and encouraged them with this address. Hatag siya speech, that's an address. Verse 7, be strong, be brave. Do not be afraid of the king of Syria or his mighty army. For there is someone with us who is far greater than he is. He has a great army, but they are all mere men. While we have the Lord our God to fight our battles for us. This greatly encouraged them. What was Hezekiah doing here? He was focusing unto the Lord. He was not focusing on the king of Assyria. He was not focusing on the problem. He was not focusing on the huge army or the strong or the strength of the army that was about to attack them. Kikinang army sa Assyria, that's a very large army. Nagdaghan kay sila mga na-conquer ng mga kingdoms and cities. But King Hezekiah told the people, Be strong, be brave. Even right now, the Lord is telling us, Be strong, be brave, be courageous. Don't be afraid of this pandemic. Don't be afraid of the economic downturn. Don't be afraid of COVID-19. Don't be afraid of kanang mga uh, kanang kalisod diri sa kalibutan or kanang mga trials and temptations that you're going through. Just keep your eyes on the Lord. Why? Because we have a God who fights our battles for us. Kinsa man diha na mga battles nga naga, kinsa man diha ang nag juice nga naga fight para sa ila. Amen. Ako, ikaw, kamo, kitang tanan. Nga mga pinili sa Dios. Nga no man. Nakabutang bay diri sa Hebrews chapter 12 verse 2. Remember Hebrews chapter 12 verse 2. This is one of our favorite verses diri. Nakabutang diri sa the Passion Translation that who the joy for the joy set before him that Jesus Christ, you scorned the shame of the cross, suffered this humiliation for the joy of knowing that we would be His. But the first part of that Hebrews 12 verse 2, di hata mag-focus ka ron. Kung sa'yo nakabatang sa first part, sa Hebrews chapter 12 verse 2, sa A, sa New King James Version, nakabatang di, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Munang sugod sa verse nga kana. Di ha lang sa atataman kay mo na atong topic. What does it mean to look unto Jesus? Nakabutang dere sa mangod sa the Passion Translation, we look away from the natural realm and we focus our attention and expectation onto Jesus. 
Nindot kaay ang pagkasulti sa Passion Translation kay dili lang looking unto Jesus but focus the attention and expectation. Ano na may expectation? Because sa footnotes na nindot dito sa Passion Translation na kabutan dito, implied by the Aramaic word core which implies a gaze upon Jesus full of expectations that He is enough. So, mo din ang buti pa sa looking unto Jesus. The Bible in Hebrews 12 verse 2 doesn't just tell us to just look at Jesus. He doesn't just tell us to look to Jesus. Kung na'y mag-aging ang motor sa imong atubangan, wala nagatabok ka sa dalan, mutan ako ka sa motor. That is looking at. Pero, kung naka sa dagat, unya, naa naga 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 langoy ka kay naglisod na kaglangoy hapit na kamalunod unya nay mo abot nga bangka sa imong atubangan ikaw wala ka nagatan-aw lang sa bangka wa ka nagatan-aw lang sa katong naga drive sa bangka you are looking unto that bangka you are looking unto the driver of that bangka katong fisherman nga nagadala na or whoever is piloting it because you are expecting something you are expecting a Rescue, you are expecting nga tabangan kanila. In ana, mag-look unto Jesus. Kining si Hebrews 12 verse 2, pag sulti, look unto Jesus, buti pa sa buti ana kanin sa The Passion Translation. Look, focus our attention on Jesus and expectation. Attention and expectation. Kaya ano, it is a look of expectancy nga we are expecting something from the Lord. Muna bitang din sa footnotes, nindot ka ayo kay giklaro sa The Passion Translation. Nasa Aramaic, it's a gaze upon Jesus full of expectations that He is enough. You are expecting when you look at the cross, you are expecting the Lord Jesus has really paid for all of your sins, past, present, and future. When you are looking to Jesus, you're not looking and focusing on your problems. You are expecting Jesus to help you out of your problem. You are expecting Jesus to bless you even in this economic downturn. You are expecting bang Jesus is enough. When you, when you are looking unto Jesus even when you are sick. You are expecting Jesus that Jesus is enough to heal you. Jesus is enough to provide for you and your family. Jesus is enough to make you successful in this life. Jesus is enough for your protection. That is what it means to look unto the Lord. It's to look unto the Lord with expectation that He is enough, that He will help us, that He will fight for us, that He will rescue us from our troubles. That is what it means to look unto Jesus. And this is what Hezekiah did. And this is what he told the people of Judah to do. Muna diri, sa 2 Chronicles chapter 32, sa verse 10 to 33, gikan gyapon sa The Living Bible, ang king of Assyria, si King Sennacherib, Nag, nag ano siya nasuya siya sa mga Israelites kay nagafight sila nagsuko sila wa, wa siya ka expect na dili sila mo surrender sa iya kay kusgan kay silang army sa so verse 13 ingon ni King Sinakarib de don't you realize that I and the other kings of Assyria before me have never yet failed to conquer a nation we attack the gods of those nations weren't able to do a thing to save their lands verse 14 name just one time when anyone anywhere was able to resist us successfully what makes you think your God can do any better? And then, ang gibuhat pag sa hari is, nagkampanya pag siya, gipadala niya mga messengers, mga letters kay King Hezekiah, pati sa mga tao sa Israel, nga dili ko ninyo kaya pilihon, mag-surrender mo. Kaya nga no, gusto niya nga mga hadlok sila. Sa so verse 18, ang katong mga messengers nga nagdala sa iyang mga letters, sa kapatangari, the messengers who brought the letters shouted threats in the Jewish language, to the people gathered in the walls of the city trying to frighten and dishearten them. Si King Sennacherib is a picture of Satan. He is trying to frighten us and to dishearten us. And si King Hezekiah put is a picture of a person, a leader who is telling us to focus on Jesus. Karon the enemy is telling you to focus on social media, to focus on the pandemic, to focus on kalisod, to focus on lack. But Jesus is telling us we should focus on Him and expect that He is more than enough. He is more than enough as a provider. He is more than enough as a healer. He is more than enough as a protector. In ana ang gusto ni Lord sa toa. But the enemy wants us to focus on these fears, on the difficulties before us. Don't focus on that. And that's what the enemy wants you to do. Grabe kayo ang enemy dere kay ingon siya nga, tanawak, wala man ko'y pildi. Every city that I have won to, I have been able to defeat. Wala man ganito na pildi sa mga Diyos at mga ubang kingdoms. Nga nung makipildi pa man ko sa inyong Diyos. 
you think you're any special and then ningon pud diri nga nagpadala pud yung mga messenger nga kabalo pag yun, gi-translate pag yun into hudeyo ang iyang mga threats o iyang mga mga kanang mga mga threats o kanang mga kanang pangambog dito sa ila para ang purpose is para ma-dishearten sila para ma-friend sila kay na may mga hudeyo nga nag-gather dito sa taas sa mga walls gipangsinggit nila ang mga threats in Jewish language kay in Hebrew Kaya para lang makasabot sila nga, wala nga mo'y kaya. Mapili, lagi mo maayo pag mo. Surrender na lang mo. Pero deal in, Anna. When you focus on Jesus, when you know that your God is fighting for you, na ay victory sa mo. Unsa'y gibuhat ni King Hezekiah o ni Isaiah, nindot kaya. I love these verses. It's probably my favorite verses. There is sa, sa, ano, sa, sa kining, uh, story about King Hezekiah. So verse 20, nakabotang dari. Then King Hezekiah and Isaiah, the prophet, son of Amos, cried out in prayer to God in heaven. And the Lord sent an angel who destroyed the Assyrian army with all of its officers and generals. So Sennacherib returned home in deep shame to his own land. Napakaulawan kay siya. And he arrived at the temple of his God. Some of his own sons killed him there. Grabe, pati ang mga anak ng patay sa iya. Verse 22, This is how the Lord saved Hezekiah and the people of Jerusalem. And now there was peace at last throughout his realm. Unsan ang peace diha throughout the realm of Hezekiah, throughout the realm of Judah. It is the shalom of the Lord. So original Hebrew, it's shalom. It includes welfare, it includes protection, it includes blessing. Grabe kayo na. That's a beautiful, beautiful world word. And this is the year, NCIC, of perfect shalom and protection from the Lord. Dapat ma-enjoy na to na karong, week, um, karong year di ay. And even this week especially, because amazing kayo ang ginabuhat ni Lord sa ato. Ah. When you have a heart for worship, when you have a heart to gather together God's people for worshiping and honoring the Lord and to support the ministry. Grabe ka ang pagkabuhat nun ni Lord sa atong mga kinabuhi. And then amazing kaya, the Lord saved them. He didn't just save them. He just didn't defeat them. He defeated King Sennacherib and the Assyrian army in a spectacular manner. Pagkasunod, adlaw patay tanan mga generals, officers, Assyrian army, gihurut sa anghel sa ginoo. That is how powerful God's people are when we pray. Ang dapat natumbuhaton whenever we're faced with a problem is to pray. God's house shall always be a house of prayer. Nakabot under then King Hezekiah and Isaiah, they cried out in prayer to God in heaven. Mugi na ang pagkabuhaton na to. It shows that we are completely dependent upon the Lord. And when they cried out in prayer, God sent an angel and slew. All the army, all the officers, all the generals. Napakaulawan sa nakarib, pag uli, pag yun niya, gipatay, pag yun sa mga sariling anak, dito sa templo sa iyang Diyos, Diyos. God did not only give them a complete victory, but He all he gave them he did, gave them an amazing, spectacular victory. Not just a victory, but an amazing and a spectacular victory. And not only that, grabe yun, gipakaulawan yun niya si, si King Sennacherib. Four, putting him down and God did it so that he would be glorified and later sa in one of the verses that is a sa ano, God did it para he would be glorified and we will take that up next Sunday pa so so verse 23 nakabutang dire from then on King Hezekiah became immensely respected among the surrounding nations and many gifts of the Lord arrived at Jerusalem with valuable presents for King Hezekiah too. Ang katong gifts for the Lord, amazing kayo. When you have a heart to gather God's people and to worship God and glorify God together with your praise and worship, with your honoring Him, with your giving unto Him, grabe kayong pagkabuhaton, Lord, that not only did God's people kanang prosper, but even ang church niya prospered, ang temple niya prospered because offerings were sent. And not only that, the people of God, the leaders of the Lord were also prosperous because people did also kanang send gifts to Hezekiah. So verse 27, so Hezekiah became very wealthy and was highly honored. Verse 28 and 29, he also built many storehouses for his grain, new wine and olive oil with many stalls for his animals and folds for the great flocks of sheep and goats he purchased. And he acquired many towns for God had given him great wealth. Remember, the word of God says, it is God who gives us the power to earn great wealth. Verse 30, he prospered in everything he did. Why? Because he had a heart to gather God's people in worship. He had a heart for the house of the Lord. Ang heart ni King Hezekiah was for the temple of the Lord. 
and then God prospered him. Parehas sa po na katong heart ni ano ni katong American bitaw si Rockefeller si uh, what's his first name basta si Rockefeller katong gi preach na nako before katong oil man pinaka first nga oil man he was considered the greatest or the wealthiest american of all time he also had a heart for the lord he also had supported the ministry he also believed in going to church and amazing kayo ang gibuhat ni lord nga blessing saya he prospered also so greatly why do you think that hezekiah prospered in all he did why do you think hezekiah was blessed with so much riches from the lord I believe the answer is in 2 Chronicles chapter 31, verse 20 and 21. Nakabot ang dari. In this way, King Hezekiah handled the distribution throughout all Judah, doing what was pleasing and good in the sight of the Lord and His people. He did what was good. And he did what was pleasing to God. He wanted to please the Lord with his life. And that is what the Lord wants from every believer. Verse 21, In all that he did in the service of the temple of God. Mona siyang sekreto. Nga nung Hezekiah was such a great king. He did everything in the service of the temple of the Lord. Unsan ang temple sa Ginoo karon kita? Kita ang mga believers. We are now the, together, the temple of God. Wherever we gather, wherever we worship him together, we are the temple of God together. And when because Hezekiah had a heart for God's temple, a heart for God's house of worship, that is why he was so blessed and so prosperous and so Wealthy And in his efforts to follow God's laws and commands, Hezekiah sought his God wholeheartedly. As a result, he was very successful. Why? Remember, Matthew 6, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto him. He sought God with his heart wholeheartedly. With all of his heart, gusto niya ma-please niyang gino. With all of his heart, he wanted to be, he wanted to bless God and honor God and glorify God. And as a result, he became very successful. Why do you think Hezekiah was able to do all of that? Why? Because it was the Lord who actually strengthened him to do so. Why? The meaning of the name of Hezekiah in the original Hebrew means Yahweh strengthens. Or, the Lord has strengthened him. So, the Lord has strengthened. Mo na siya ang meaning sa original name sa Hebrew. Sa pangalan ni Hezekiah. Yahweh strengthens or the Lord has strengthened. The reason that, that Hezekiah was able to live a life that was pleasing unto the Lord. The reason he was able to lead the people of God correctly. The reason he was such a good king, such a prosperous king, such a wealthy king is because the Lord has strengthened him. Kinsa pa diha ang mga gina-strengthen sa Ginoo? Amen. Kamo, ako, kamo nagapaminaw. Remember, ingon po si Paul, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And in the context, kung tanaw na tong context, it's in the context of serving the Lord. It's in the context of serving God's people. It's in the context of his ministry of finding believers of building the churches unto the Lord. He was the apostle for the Gentiles. He was called by the Lord for that ministry. Mona, nindot ka ayo. Because when Paul, when we do things for the Lord, it's not the I, us who is doing it. It's actually God who is doing it through us. Like we took up before last, last Sunday, when, when David was killing the lion and the bear, it was God who was actually doing it through him. When, when si Samson killed the Philistines, he claimed that it was through God who was using him. When Peter and John healed the lame person into the gate of the temple, ingon sila, we did not do this by our own power. It was the Lord God who did it. So it's not actually us, the eye. Hezekiah was a good king. He did the right things. What was Hezekiah's part then? His part was to say yes to the plan of God, just like you and me. We say yes. We want to be used by the Lord. Yes, Lord. We want to be used by you in the church. Yes, Lord, we want to glorify you in the church. Lord, yes, Lord. All our things that the only thing that is our part sa, sa kine is to say yes unto God. And you will find that even when you do the right things, whenever you do things that are pleasing unto the Lord, it's not you doing it, it's God who is doing it through you. When I say first Corinthians chapter 15, verse 10, Akapatandre, whatever I am now, it is all because God poured out his special favor on me. 
and not without results. For I worked harder than any of the other apostles. Yet it was not I, but God who was working through me by His grace. It is God working through us by His grace. Paul, whatever I am now is because God poured out His special favor on me. I realize I am a lawyer now, not because of my own talents, abilities, or efforts, but because God poured out His special favor on me. We have our families right now because God poured out His special favors on me. We have ministries right now because God poured out His special favor on us. You have good health right now because God poured out His special favor on you. You have finances to provide for your family because God poured out His special favor on you. It's all because of the grace of God. Everything comes by the grace of God under the new covenant. And still, Paul still worked harder. Say it with me, worked harder. Grabe gihapon. Trabaho gihapon. Still work. God is not advocating laziness. Still, work gihapon. Pero still, even when he's working, even when he's doing the ministry, even when he's supporting his own ministry by tent making, he said, it's not me doing it. It's actually God working through me by his grace. Because everything comes by the grace of God. Even our good deeds that we do for the Lord, it comes by the grace of God. And I like so much kining gitsulti dere ni Paul sa so 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 4 to 9. Paul gives thanks to God. I always thank my God for you for the gracious gifts he has given you. Now that you belong to Christ Jesus. Verse 5 through him God has enriched your church in every way. And every way means every way including financially, including spiritually. With all of your eloquent words and all of your knowledge, this confirms that what I told you about Christ is true. First of all, nindat kay read this verse four. Kay ingon si Paul nga nagapasalamat sa ginawa because now that we belong to Jesus, ever since we received Jesus as Lord and Savior over our lives, God has poured out His special favor on us, and He has given us many gracious gifts. Kini tanan atong mga gina enjoy karon gikan sa Ginoo atong health, atong finances, atong mga ministries, atong simbahan, atong friends, atong loved ones, atong families. Kini tanan gracious gift ni sa Ginoo sa to mga libre niya, mga gifts niya sa toa that he gave us graciously because we belong to him. He gives it because as Hezekiah said, God is good. God is loving, God is kind. And nakabutan dire God is enrich your church in every way. Every way means every way. Spiritually, physically, financially, God has enriched our church in every way. Mona siyang will sa ginoo para sa people. And God knows how to do it and we just follow that pattern that the Lord has given us in the book of 1 Chronicles 28 to 33. And pag makita sa mga people nga grabe ka and blessing sa ginoo sa ato mga sa iyang mga katawhan, sa mga miyembro sa simbahan, Makita ni mo, this will confirm that what Paul taught us about Jesus is actually true. But I sa the reading. Verse 8, He will keep you strong to the end so that you will be free from all blame on the day when our Lord Jesus Christ returns. God will do this for He is faithful to do what He says and He has invited you into partnership with His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. How do we know nga mula as Christians? Because God will keep us strong until the end. Do you think nga ang ato ang good conclusion or ending sa kinabuhi is in our hands alone? No. It is in the hands of God. The reason why we have this doctrine called the perseverance of the saints, why we believe we will not lose our salvation, why we will not transfer to false religions or convert or leave the church, or kanang, ano, turn our backs on the door, or become atheists, is because God will keep us strong until the very end, so that we'll be free from all blame when we are in front of our Lord Jesus. Why will God do that? Because He's faithful to do what He says. According to Philippians 1.6, He is faithful to finish the work He has begun in each and every one of us. And because He has called us to be partners, to into partnership, with Jesus Christ our Lord. I just recently notarized a document that contains a partnership between uh, mga nag-incorporate sila sa sec o partnership nila. Dili sila pare-parehas o contribution. Ang uban, mas daku contribution. Ang uban, gamay lang ang contribution. Ang uban, kwarta ang i-contribute. Ang uban, trabaho ang contribute 
So nagya pa contribution. Amazing ka ayo ba? Yung wala tayo ikahatag sa Ginoo. Because kabaluta, when we do our good things, it, good deeds even, when we live pleasing lives, when we do it for the Lord, si Lord ay nagabuha through us. Siya din nagagamit sa tuwa. As according pa kay Paul dito sa 1 Corinthians nga tong ibasa ganiha. Pero still, he wants us to be partners with him. It's amazing but that God in heaven wants us to be partners with Jesus Christ. Unsa tong contribution sa partnership na kini? All that we need to do is to say yes. Why? Because God is not interested in robots. Every one of us from Adam unto the last man of, of the end of time, we will all have free will. Because that's what, it, that's what it means to be created in the image and likeness of God. God has free choice and so do we. We have free choice. All that we have to do is say yes to the Lord. Yes, Lord. Gamitiko. Yes, Lord. I believe in you. Yes, Lord. I put my faith and trust in you. Yes, Lord. That's all that we contribute to this partnership. And then God will use it. He'll step in. He'll use you. As according to Galatians 2.20, it's not me living, but it's Christ who lives in me. Amazing kayang you know. Even though we have not much to contribute to this partnership, whenever we do right, the reason we will persevere until the very end because God will keep us strong until the very end because He is faithful to what He has said. And He wants us to be partners with Jesus, partners in the ministry, partners to share in the gospel. You see Jesus, go and share this gospel unto all the world, unto all creatures. In we look at Jesus on the cross. We focus not on our circumstances, but we look at Jesus. Whenever we see Jesus on the cross, whenever we focus on Jesus, we know that all of our sins has been paid for. We know that we are now the righteousness of God in Christ. And because Jesus was raised from the dead, tomorrow we celebrate Resurrection Sunday. Oh, by the way, there is a very nice surprise waiting for us in church. Please come on Sunday, tomorrow, and uh, you will see for yourselves. So anyways, Ang ano, ang nice kita ayo si Lord. Kaya ng, we, we, there is this blessing, but there is this partnership that we enter into Him. And when we focus on Jesus, grabi kita ayo pagabawat ni Lord sa ato ah. When we look unto Him with expectation that He is enough, God will bless our ministries. God will bless our lives. God will prosper us. God will take care of us. God will heal us. God will answer all of our prayers. That is what the Lord does for each and every one. All that He's waiting for is to enter partnership with Him by saying, Yes, Lord, I want to be used by You. Yes, Lord, I want to honor You with everything that You have given me. All of these gracious gifts, Lord, I give it back to You, Lord God, because, Lord, I know You are the source of all my life. I look to You with expectation, and I know You will fight my battles. You will cause me to be victorious, Lord. You will give me, Lord, this great perseverance until the very end because You are a faithful God. And that is what the Lord wants from each of us. Because King Hezekiah was so committed to gathering his people together to honor and worship the Lord with everything that they had. Great blessing came upon him and upon the people of Israel and upon the church, which was the temple. Because everything that Hezekiah did was for the sake of God's temple. And that is our message for tonight. Well, let us pray. Lord, thank you so much, Lord, for the lives of your people listening to us, Lord. Salamat, Lord Jesus, that you have spoken into their hearts, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for calling us into partnership with you. Lord, we know we do not have anything to contribute, Lord, because even when we do good, it is only your grace, Lord, that is doing, you're doing your work through us, through your grace. Salamat, Lord Jesus, for using us. We say, yes, Lord, use all of us, Lord. Our talents, our ministries, Lord God, cause us, Lord, to be living worshipers of you, Lord in every area of our lives, in our finances, in our health, in our body, Lord. Everything, Lord God, we want to honor you with everything. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's continue with our communion. Let's lift up the bread. On the night you were betrayed, Lord Jesus, you lifted the bread, gave thanks and said, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Lord Jesus, we are looking unto you. We are looking to your finished work on the cross. On that cross, Lord Jesus, you said, it is finished and every sin was placed upon you, Lord. We have now become the righteousness of God in Christ. On that cross, Lord Jesus, you finished the work that was given you, Lord. And you said, Lord, in your word, by your stripes, the punishment that brought us, shalom was upon you. And by your stripes, we are healed. Thank you, Lord, that as you are, so are we in this world, according to your promises, 1 John 4, 17. 
you are victorious. You are highly favored. You are sitting at the right hand of the Father. You have seated us in the heavenlies with you, Lord. And there is no sickness, no disease that can touch you, Lord. Not COVID-19, not hypertension, not diabetes. No sickness, no disease can touch you in any way, form, or manner. We thank you, Lord, that as you are, so are we in this world. As we partake of your body, Lord, every part of our body and every area of our life is healed, restored, and renewed. In Jesus' name, let's partake of the body of our Lord Jesus. Let us lift up the cup on the night you were betrayed, Lord. He lifted the cup, gave thanks, and said, This is my blood, he said, Lord Jesus. It is shed for all for the forgiveness of sins, according to Matthew 26, Lord God. He said, Lord Jesus, that this new covenant, Lord God, your new covenant, your blood of the new covenant, Lord, is the everlasting covenant, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for what you have done for us on the cross. Tomorrow, Lord, we, we celebrate Resurrection Sunday, Lord. Because, Lord Jesus, you said in your word, Lord, in Colossians, O oh God, that because you are resurrected, we are no longer in our sins, O oh God. Salamat, Lord Jesus. Your resurrection proves that we have been paid for of all of uh, the sins of our lifetime, Lord God. And we now stand before you as the righteousness of God in Christ. When you were crucified, Lord Jesus, the entire earth fell into darkness, Lord, from 12 noon up to 3 in the afternoon, Lord, because all the sins you paid for, O oh God. Something happened, Lord. Even the earth shook, Lord, with a great earthquake, Lord, because what you did, Lord, has never happened before. It was such an incredible feat. It was such an incredible thing. That's why, Lord, whenever we drink your blood and eat your body, Lord, we proclaim your death until we come again. Because, Lord Jesus, what you did was so powerful, so great, so amazing, Lord. With that work, Lord Jesus, you have cleansed us from every sin, made all of your promises, yes and amen, unto us, Lord Jesus, and made us victorious, Lord, and filled us with your grace and placed us in you, in Christ, the place of victory of every new covenant Christian. Thank you, Lord. We continue to proclaim this amazing gospel, good news, Lord, to all who will hear. Thank you, Lord, for your blood. In Jesus' name, let's drink the blood of our Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, I pray, O oh God, for the people who are listening tonight, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for blessing all of your people, O oh God. We pray, O oh God, for a blessing, Lord. Salamat, Lord God. You will bless and prosper, Lord, every member of the New Covenant in Christ Church, O oh God, especially when we are used by you, Lord. I pray, Lord, for blessing, Lord, over Pastor Arman, Sister Gina, and their entire family, Lord. Salamat, Lord, you will bless them in every area of their lives, Lord. Salamat, Lord Jesus, you will uh, protect them, Lord, bless them physically, emotionally, spiritually, God, financially, Lord, in every area of their, their, their lives, O God. Salamat, Lord, for pouring out, Lord God, your great favor and protection upon your people in the New Covenant in Christ Church. Thank you, Lord, every person, Lord, who's hearing me right now will be used mightily and greatly by you, Lord. Salamat, Lord Jesus, that when we have a heart to gather, to worship and glorify you with every gracious gift that you have poured out in our lives, Lord, great blessing, Lord, flows into our lives as well. We want to be used by you, Lord God. We don't want to go through life, Lord, just enjoying ourselves, Lord, and living for ourselves. We want to live for you. We want to do everything for your church, for your body, Lord, for your temple, O oh God. Thank you, Lord, for blessing us like you blessed the people of Judah and you blessed King Hezekiah, Lord God. We want to have a heart just like him, Lord, for you. we believe, Lord, you gave him as a good example for all believers and all Christian leaders and pastors alike, Lord. Salamat, Lord Jesus, that the right to worship and gather together will never be curtailed, curtailed O oh God, in the Philippines, Lord. We pray for our leaders, President Duterte, Lord, the IATF, Lord, Mayor Indaisara, Lord. May they never issue rules, O oh God, that will stop us or stop our right to gather together, worship and honor your name. For we know, Lord, there is great power. There is great kanang blessing, O oh God. There is a great breakthrough, Lord, whenever we come together to worship you. 
Salamat, Lord Jesus, for blessing all of your people. We pray for Israel, O God. We pray for their salvation and their protection from all of their enemies, O God. We bind this disease of COVID-19 over the Philippines, especially over Davao region. You have no right to infect anyone anymore, Satan, in Jesus Christ's mighty name. We release your healing, Lord, unto the Philippines and especially Davao region, Lord. We thank you, Lord. These places will be COVID-free, O God, very, very soon in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you so much, Lord. I bless you, our people, O God. I bless, O God. Salamat, Lord Jesus. I bless all of your chosen people, Lord. Now the Lord bless you. The Lord keep you from all harm. The Lord keep you in His grace. The Lord make His face to shine upon you and pour out His grace and His gracious gifts unto you. The Lord lift the light of His countenance upon you and give you His perfect shalom, both now and forever. Now unto Him, unto our Lord Jesus, and unto God our Father, who is able to keep us from falling and stumbling, be all blessing, honor, majesty, praise, and thanksgiving forever and ever. In Jesus' name, and the people of God say, Amen. Thank you for joining us tonight. Join us tomorrow in church. There's a nice surprise there. Thank you, and God bless you in every way possible. Don't forget to join us in our church service tomorrow at 9.30 in the morning. Join us also in our receiving meeting on Wednesday nights at 6.30 and on our Saturday evening service at 6 in the evening. Thank you. You are so blessed and you are so loved and, and honored by the Lord because God is a good God and He loves all of His people. Good night. Goodbye.